player people don't know and uh is 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 gonna have open lines of sight on train and his aim is definitely on point today i'm just i want to get it out there you, you you said this now twice h and s player what does that mean it's a it's a movement game mode where you uh, it's called hide and seek that people used to play in 1.6 where okay. you can you basically can fly around yeah it's all about movement avoiding people from touching you good to know good to know the first time I just nodded along I'll with show, you, but now you've got show you the some answer. H &S. I'll show you some H&S videos. Maybe, maybe Acor has some. They're pretty impressive. Yeah, well, hold, what hold. was impressive was somehow Mad Lions have gotten control of the bomb here in the pistol. So while you filled me in, they filled in mouse sports, but full of lead. The USPs fire off in upper box halls. They got the bomb. And, well, it's weird because mouse sports, they decided to head down the ramp to try and still take the bomb site, you know, since they had lost their element of, of surprise. But they lost the bomb in the process. So it's not an easy one to try and recover here. Minute on the clock still. Looks like they're all going to come in from the same Ooh. position. Good first gush. That's going to kind of scare Acor back around at least the next corner. But they still want to make sure they find this timing perfectly. They have their eyes turned back around because, yeah, there's a world where this number six man, Shush, is actually over towards Z or can flank. But no, no, no. CT is dogpiling the bomb, putting down another smoke to really burn down the clock here. And Mouse Sports, they're going to have to decide to either make this play with like 20 seconds left over or run through it. Neither ideal. Not ideal, yeah. I do think waiting out makes the most sense just the smoke you got to respect it it's really hard to get through that you're gonna get spammed you can't afford to lose the first duel here nope walks gonna try to distract up from ramp walks actually gets the job done unless shush has something to say about it he picked up two of the three kills 10 seconds one shot and it's mad lions to kick it off here on train picking up That's their ct pistol he had a way to call that out. You know, he could have jumped out and uh, got to the site. I'm sure it crossed his mind, but he probably thought, I'll take one bullet here on this angle off the audible since I know he has to hold W, and then maybe I can get away, get down the ramp, beat him to the site, stop the plant, or force the fight. Great round uh, on the hold. Yeah, it's a very difficult round to win. Nice attempt from Frozen to come through and just on solo try to dismantle that crossfire. Agreed. No bomb plant for Mouse Sports in that first round. Decide to come in with the buy regardless. Not working out until Frozen gets something with the Deeg, but Bubski drops bomb yet again. Just being his own boss. Always on his own. Always in the face of Mouse Sports. Always one step ahead. He takes the uh, high road up onto the dumpster. <laughs> and Roy's here to help lend a hand. Frozen called back to action. He's at least got the MP9, but god yeah. damn, they're just gonna chew him up through the smoke. I think Bubsky's bio on Twitter reads something like professional baiter for Mad Lions or something. So, you know, he this is very, very much his role, and it seems like it fits with his personality perfectly. And he is fine always finding good timings. Great guy to have alone on a team who can scour out map control by themselves, especially if they're successful most of the time. That just makes all of the other parts <laughs> of the map a lot stronger. Or, you know, you typically want to have a buddy system going on. But if you guys have uh, H&S videos, I know you, we've got some 1.6ers and Sorcerers, to be honest, in the, in the, in the chat. But tweet them at Connor. If you want to see some of the best 1.6 H&S videos you can, you can show us. Yeah, please do. At ScrawnyCG. I went and checked. Ooh, the Zeus. You know what's better than a Zeus? The flying MP9. Roy proves it there in that one. It's going to get most sports to start flooding out from T-Con, but these rifles at a distance so favored in this sort of a situation. Hell, Bubski, he's going to get even closer and really put a nail in this coffin. And uh, you were right. Bubski's Twitter bio, and I quote, full-time paid baiter for Malding Lions. <laughs> Making some noise. Hashtag go mad. That's good. 3-0 start for the Danes. Oh, that's great. That's great. And, you know, there's so many people who can't, there's so many people who cannot lurk full time anymore because it's too obvious once they die, what the set, what the setup is. So it's kind of a rare sight to see players try to champion the role and take it on almost all of the time. But yeah, Bubski finds a way to innovate constantly. So the full buy up here into round four. We've got the slight pressure outside, trying to bait out some utilities. Just that initial flashbang over T-Con. Three running inside. Ooh. What a spray by Kerrigan. Oh, wow. And he tries to go one better, but then a Cillian doubles back. 
The leaders taking charge, setting the example. Roy hot on the heels of the ramp players. Rock's having none of that. Turns back around, deletes him as we have Acor trying to take these long range duels, but he is most certainly outnumbered. The utility still so strong for the tease. Goes for the wild spray at a distance, but that one's hard to control. So Finn Anderson, Kerrigan, my man, just pop and open the ramp room. You saw how quickly Roy decides to go for the flank. Lots of uh, flavors of Bubski in that moment, but it doesn't work out for him. Good thing Walks is there to trade Astillion as well, or else Astillion's 2K could have very well outshined that of Kerrigan. The only good thing that happened to them that round was just knocking down some utility because that was such an amazing couple of entries by Kerrigan. You think that that's over. It's kind of surprising that he was up on top of the train as the bait on top of that. Wow, a tag from the off combined with an aid as well to finish off Kerrigan. This outside rush is stopped in its tracks. Yeah, they're really trying to push the issue, but Astillion oh. and Acor and Roy all combine. A near team ace other than Shush, not needed. He stayed quiet that round as Mad Lions 4-1, but there's the grenade from Bubski thrown before the op shot actually takes down Kerrigan's half health. You saw Astillion posted around the smokes, Acor the exact same. So that double op setup, Followed by, of course, or rather, predecessed by Bubski's grenade. All works out. And as quickly as we had mouse sports on the board, we have them back on the half buys. One of the very best pieces of utility you can use to stop an outside rush is just an HE. Unlike a incendiary that can take time to spread, people can run through or get there faster. Uh, a flashbang can also be good to bounce it straight off, but sometimes people jump out because of their own flashbangs and can avoid them. An HE will do damage and slow your targets and does AOE so that anybody who's coming out, exploding out of the choke point will all get hit. So in a lot of ways, an HE can be stronger than a Molotov in stopping rushes to outside. I think that last round's a prime example of it. Woxic trying to find one of the two operas on the other side of this smoke here. An incredible player this man is. Not going to be made easy by the fact that his teammates are just on the pistols, but uh, it has been rough to watch. Certain individuals seem to struggle more than others as we return to the online realm. I put Woxic towards the top of that list, unfortunately, for most sports. They're getting closer to this bomb site, at least here inside of this round, but Bubski and Acorn locking it down. A kill apiece before Chris gets onto the feed. Ah, uh, but he too canceled out after just one. Good job by Rops to get behind enemy lines, but 20 seconds left. You know, if this was one of those 2v2 moments and the rest of his team had really succeeded, then maybe he makes magic happen. But even with that crisp of a first eagle shot, you see what happens. Everyone expects him and the round goes the way of the Danes. Five to one already. Yeah, you never know when that big flank lurk could actually be the key piece of the puzzle. If you get two kills outside, the rotations come in, you know, Rops will certainly get a third, and then you, you have a round, especially if you can just sit behind trains and wait for him to activate that lurk while making it seem like you're working on something outside. But, you know, Mad Lion, so they deal with the pressure so quickly outside, he's not useful. Five to one, and everybody's got the weapons that they want. They trade nades outside a lot more from the CTs. They put pressure on both Tcon and Ladder simultaneously. Roy, ooh, being teased by Rops. I'd back up, because he's coming for you. Roy's gonna take a little bit of wall bang damage, and now on low health, he's still gonna have to stick around. A well banked frag grenade would blow him open, but there's wow. dwindling utility here for mouse sports and dwindling control, unable to keep Ivy in their back pocket, as we do have a Cillian cutting down one with the AWP. The double sniper setup looking really good on this outer yard. Man, they're catching him at every single turn. You saw Asilian had to push through a smoke to catch out Kerrigan on that lurk. Sometimes that play works out beautifully that Kerrigan tried to pull off. And they at least get the ladder. Talking about yeah. another uh, great KZ player. There's Ooh, the drop. Rocks. Wow, that's an incredibly difficult shot to hit. Shooting through his own toes. Gets two Such players a... down inside of T. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Frozen. Frozen sees a player up. with his back turned. And now he's got confirmation on a second. He's the bomb carrier as well, so he's going to tap into the back of the head, you'd think? No, 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 he keeps going. Oh, this is sick. Awesome stuff from Frozen. He finds timing on this outer yard, deletes both of the offers. Tunnel vision 
the snipers were. And Mouse Sports seem to have just gotten a second round out of nowhere. Rops clearing out the ladder room and then Frozen clearing out the offers. He figured out that puzzle perfectly. You know, I think if he attacked any other way, there was a chance that he gets traded, but he Agreed. figured out that, uh, yeah, he needed to kill in that order of events. Kush going for the 1v2 can't happen. Frozen continues his killing spree. Three frags to combine and uh, to, to highlight, you know, Rops making this ladder play as well. Finally, him having a round that's not made in vain. Awesome shot again. So hard to hit that. It's such an awkward angle. Damn, Frozen. And I, I, what I really like about that that Frozen play is that uh, once he sees the first offer, he had doubled back to see the one on Ivy, and he saw, based on the on the positioning, that like there was a, like you said, there was a chance he dies because he was going to walk into the angle being held. He was yeah. going to walk into something of the scope. He comes back at, at it and solves the problem. But here we have the leader of the pack. Not only was Bubsky the third best overall player at Flashpoint, he did it whilst taking more opening duels than anyone else on his team. So always at the first step of the equation, young Bubsky putting in work. Yeah, and what do we know about entry fraggers? They're made to take on space, but they're never also the superstars because they end up dying the most, taking the most damage. The person who takes the first duel is usually the guy who's supposed to be traded, not necessarily the guy who's supposed to guarantee the entry. And that's why that makes that strat all that all that, that stat all the more impressive. What awkward situation to be in with the Mag 7. They've got him locked in. Since he's pinned here, they can take ladder room control and they also kill Bubsky behind. So tough situation. But Acor, he's actually still gotten off and he's been menacing outside. Ooh, yeah, another there's kill. The second. It's 3v3. Yeah, Almost like unfortunate for Mouse Sports that they find those kills so quickly because that's what allows Acor to catch some by surprise. Oh. A third, and he is looking for more. The last two remaining members of Mouse Sports have both been tagged up. Combined health of 52. That's it. Acor has done everything, and he's going to read the peek out into Ivy. Oh. Pistol headshot at that distance. He has to get the ball. Back in for the scope, and he has Chris J exactly where he wants him. 50 seconds still. Chris, one kill one kill on this map and he's gonna have to get out. two to clutch this wow what a move by acor holy shit oh yeah I'll yeah it for oh yeah you. this is dream hack i mean we can let the emotions flow that is so nuts by him man on this eco he's so elusive man he takes so many different fights it's really hard to figure out how to trade him you know i think that third peek into him from Sandwich was maybe where the main mistake was made. Chris, low HP. He's identified one target. That Acor is still there, but they don't... And yeah, he's assuming maybe the rotator is probably just sitting in connector. He's going to try to put the bomb in. Oh, he's getting tapped. Oh, Acor. the ace, man. The freaking ace by Acor. And it's all in the eco. The three op shots, the push into Ivy, the perfect reads, and the smoke kill to top it off. Two. Three. The USP and give us the last one. <laughs> Baby. Lap it up, my friends. It doesn't get much better than that. Man, I was thinking that twist ace that we saw was one of the nicest aces that we've seen this year. And this is like such so complimentary to that. Like that has all of the elements of a great round. Hold up, we've got aggression. Mouse sports, they're just gonna try and stampede into the B site. Kerrigan getting the first kill, but it's Shush who does have cover, and he's still real close. Woxic, Robson, Frozen. Three key pieces for Mouse Sports, all still standing. One of which is coming down from the box halls, but Shush, again, on the site, just not giving them anything more than the plant itself. And Asilian finds timing as Frozen tries to set up Robson. A single CZ never going to be enough. A seventh round for Mad Lions. They are right back in control. I would love how Mad Lions, it seems like in every situation, even when the bomb goes down and you start to reassess how, how favored the CTs are, that they've got this a long-term and a short-term plan going at the same time. There's always some kind of big flank moving in with a player working on a trade, and it feels like they're constantly uh, maintaining tension throughout the rounds and allowing all of their pieces to work and also be calm because they have map control, they have people in position to trade, they're always moving forward, and, and it's just really difficult for most sports to kind of get, just calculate the inventory of all the players that are left over and what could have been pushed and what hasn't. At least they're back into the purchase. I like that most sports are just kind of keeping up the tempo on the rounds they don't have much to play with. It forced the bomb plant, and it enforced the buy on this one. 
We got some weird uh, utility being thrown over here towards Ivy's side. Acor still a constant threat around this smoke. Keeps his head turned back towards Ivy where there is a player coming in that's frozen on the other side. Astillion trying to hold him back, but it's Chris J who's managed to get out from Tcon and he picks up the kill. Low HP and Acor deals with him swiftly. Again, just plugging any hole that Mouse Sports can seem able to open. Frozen may have found timing though. Acor is going to walk back into this and Frozen's actually pinned in close. Has to let him get back somewhat, but this is pressure. This is, this is making discomfort for the CTs on A. And this ladder player allows them now to, to compromise more positions what? upstairs. Asilian just comes flying through the mullet. I mean, that's a full spread Molotov. Where, where did he have to go that he needs to do that just at that very moment? I mean, there was a chance he gets the kill, but still two on three now. Yeah, a little wild. Let's, uh, you know, there's, there's disrespecting your opponent and then there's disrespecting yourself. <laughs> I think yeah, that's what Asilian tries. To play. Ooh, a war of patience. Oh, and Acor wins it. Oh my God, give us the back-to-back -back aces. Seriously. Oh okay. no, sir. Watsik's got other ideas and I like that too. I want to see some counter opping coming out of Mouse Sports. You know, if Mad Lions are trying to face you this aggressively, then I think that Watsik could be a key piece to punishing that. If they're offering kills, hey, you take what you can get. Shush gets in the gun of the best spot to go for this retake. You can cut off a lot of the angles here. There might be a peek in his favor. Yeah, there's a chance. Now that chance is gone. His position given up. It looks like he'll recede, reassess the situation. Doesn't have too much time to play with though. There is that Molotov on Woxic, so an insurance uh, policy in play. Woxic also swapped over does. the AK. Shush walks in and is sent packing. So Mouse Sport's gonna make it happen. Look like Acor was doing his damnedest to shut down another round, but Mohan, Mouse Sports prevail. They're third on the board. To be honest, he really did. You know, everybody else was just couldn't get kills. I mean, he, he, in some sense, oh, he's the only player to get a kill in the last two rounds. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, there's a stat. There's, there's an Elliot special right there. Back stat. Uh, Hit us with this one. Scouting for facts. Rops had just one scout. Uh, sorry. Rops had just one scout kill on Inferno before this game. He executed two CTs in one round with the zoom popper. The zoom popper, the showstopper. Yeah. Rops, cool. Yeah, and he did those are two scout shots on the B site from quad in the CT spawn and then construction to win the round on the eco for Mouse Sports, one of the only highlights of the game in a match where I think they had four rounds. And Elliot, if you're going to put the SSG in brackets, I want to see the SSG 08. 08. All right. It's important. <laughs> you messed up Mohan. Oh, oh no, the grenades are back in action. It's always Kerrigan too on the receiving end. Oh, oh. Bubsky, oh. shotgun on the ladder. And Roy, well, he gets somewhat flashed, but he's still gonna find them with their backs turned, drops bomb, and he knows he's in the midst of it all. A little bit too much to handle here. We do have Mouse Sports back into the man advantage. Woxic looking for another headshot, and they catch a silly, and again, parading through utility. Acor, who else? to try and hold this back. He gets the headshot, only losing a little bit of health. Rops barely alive. Comes out from behind and mm. shuts this down. That's a fourth for most boards. They are definitely getting back into control. I, I mean, I'm not at that point where I'm gonna say they're throwing, but Mad Lions, I feel like they're, they're really trying to force the aggression that was working out at first. It seems to be a little bit more predictable now. Most sports getting ahead of it. Yeah, I think Roy, there was, a, there was definitely more potential to, to make a second kill happen, but I think he got a little bit nervous, but you never want to take the T-Con fight from that angle because they have a shadow advantage on you. So it'll be impossible to win if they're just like, you know, smart enough to realize they just have to outweigh you. Um, but yeah, tough, tough position to be in. Ivy push is crushed. Not a single kill for Mad Lines. Four for Frozen, in fact, as he jumps to 12 and this half gets a whole lot closer. But yeah, you might be onto something. Now they have a round where they don't have a lot of money and Acor doesn't have his op. I would wait for it, but it's hard to justify waiting for it when you have a full buy in rifles for everybody. So they could potentially half buy on a few and still have enough for next round and just let Acor mainly save. But uh, they've had such a su successful half, I wonder if they'll try. A Welsh town. Mel's last six training games. 
starting at the earliest. Oh, okay, they've been on a lost win streak since. So lost win, lost win, lost win. What would that tell you about this game? I mean, it's supposed to be a loss. Is the F? If we look at this, if this is true, then it's there's probably a hundred percent chance they lose this game. But sometimes the past can't always predict the future. Show me the it formula. Might just, it might just be a good indicator, but it does tell us they're definitely inconsistent at the very least. Show me the math. Calculated. Mad Lions in with a buy. We've got most of the trimmings they could hope for and an opening kill. That's a wall bang from Roy versus Kerrigan, the first casualty of the round again, but it won't matter if his team can still make up for it. If his death is in vain, this might be... Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Bubsky tries to flank off this. Refreshing yeah, ladder. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It lingers, and the bomb burnt to a crisp. Down ramp. Ross able to pick up a crucial headshot versus Acor. All the while, Asilian and Shush are going to lock down the play. Chris J, a god at clutching on this B bomb site. Would need as many kills in this round as he already has, and that's not going to happen. Bubsky, who else? comes in from behind, Mad Lions arrive at eight, three rounds the lead over most courts. Yeah, they wasted no time. They've been able to flank somehow every single time uh, the every single time that mouse sports have attempted to hit B site. So that's a, yeah, that's an eighth. And uh, they don't upgrade to a rifle on this round. They might not have had enough money to do that, even though they've saved. Um, I don't think they picked one up either, but um, yeah, the, the, they still had a very successful round there to look back on. Back to ladder antics. A lot of the round, I feel like, has come down to does the ladder guy get one kill or does he die? Because uh, mouse ports are, are pretty damn good at taking ladder, if I'm honest, and have made it a, more than a nightmare to try to hold. Good flash. Oh Bob's my e. god. He just bursts through. And I love that that smoke pops just a moment later, too. He gets the information and it keeps him safe. But once more, mouse ports just hitting the NOS button flying down the ramp into this B bomb site. Chris J is going to use the flash to try and interrupt any sort of rotate. Roy sees one flying through the skies, but Woxic's still able to get away. And Acor, well, he wants some. He's going to get some. Charges straight into the faces of Frozen and Chris. Roy's denied from back, and Rock's now with everything to do. A one versus three with Acor already pinning him into the close smoke, but nobody else to get on top of that bomb, so he doubles back for it. There's two kits in the situation, one of which is on Acor. Bomb defused, and a ninth round for Mad Lions. A perfect angle to avoid the action. Acor, amazing round by him to push up, get those two kills looking beautiful. Now, again, they have a, a flank in place in order to stop I think I think it was Roy who ends up dying maybe to Rops in the back there, but yes. still to get the tag on him, they know that he's close to the low ramp as well. They wait him out and defuse. There's pretty much no chance that he can uh, get down there to stop the defuse. And Mad Lions pick up a ninth off of denying another B hit. They're looking seriously equally as good as Inferno. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, Bubski, good for just the one. Mouse sports. Sure as hell not going to go down without a fight. They're keeping up the tempo, trying to go blow for blow. But it seems like Mad Lion's the heavier hitter for the moment. 4v2 in the final <laughs> round of the first half. The Danes gunning for them double digits. I feel like Asilian shoots if he's double scoped there. <laughs> I feel like he's trying to play it on hard mode. The single scope from the back, back of six. But Looking yeah. for a challenge, maybe. I got nothing to worry about, man. Me and Mouse Ports are just, uh, they've got they've got nothing left in the playbook. Busting out T-Con. Kerrigan's been dying every round, just holding angles inside T-Con, waiting to get set up in the round, getting double naded, spam pushed, flashed in. It's not been a fun game for him. I will forever remember the round on Inferno where Mouse Ports buy five nades <laughs> and Kerrigan gets blown away. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was something special. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Something very poetic about that round of Counter Strike. Yeah, definitely. Let's see if Rock okay. <laughs> also has anything to work with. Look at this quick little headshots coming out of Robson Woxic, and that's why you can never count them out. But uh, hey, Woxic gets what he wants. It's a bomb plant over on the B site, a Galil, and 38 health in the final round of the half. If he was gonna clutch, now better than ever. Lots of utility for Astillion on the retake. Double kit in this situation. Looks like the Opera is going to be playing first. 
And Astillion looks to trade. Now, Woxic does have the audio that they're coming on in. What's he going to do about it? Oh, he's going to at least tuck himself into a little bit of cover. But Mad Lions, they're sticking inside of the smoke. He goes for the spray. And we are back, folks, with what will be a very important half. Elimination looms near. And Mouse Sports a little dangerously close to that line, Launders. They're switching over to the CT side. And uh, Mad Lions looking to close up shop real quick. It was brought up by our producer that he feels like Mouse Sports. They can do this on the CT side. And then we started looking at some previous matches and saw that Mad Lions did struggle in the on their on to get any T rounds versus MIBR in uh, in a very recent grand final where they won a lot of money. But uh, you know, my thought is that Acor has been playing so incredibly well that on this T side, just one or two miraculous rounds by him could net them the victory. But I think there is a point to be made that uh, Mouse Sports CT side going to be much better than their T-side. I think there's definitely reason to believe it. I also think that Mad Lions know better than anybody else that comebacks can happen here on train. So probably not going to over-aggress too much in these opening rounds. We saw some wild shenanigans happening once they had that early lead. But here in the pistol, it's back into the four versus four. Kerrigan is watching Old Bomb cross, and Roy is deciding to run straight out. Ivy with that P250, tapping Kerrigan down and getting the kills they need to plant this bomb. It's been flushed away from Mouse Sports. Mad Lions just cranking it into that A bomb site, taking names, taking heads, taking rounds, and a six point lead. They didn't even need Acor. He died first. Everybody else turned up. This is all beautiful movement and clearing of the angles. Great round by Roy. Of course, he, he predicts the peak there from Kerrigan and uh, the Molotov to flush him out. I mean, there was no no places where Mouse Sports felt comfortable standing, even having to entertain the idea of wrapping backs, uh, wrapping Old Bomb, excuse me, on top of uh, pushing out a T-Con. Bilal. <laughs> Frozen ready up close with the Deeg. Takes a bottle to the face. Astillion just hanging up above it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That smoke, I don't think so. Decides to just sprint back up and hold off here. No rush. No rush for Mad Lions. This is one of those rounds where they know they have the favorite by. They know they're in control of the game. And they know they get to set the pace. So do not give them a chance. Deep Molotov to flush out where Frozen was, but he has already evacuated this position. Yes, that's right. He plays behind Ebox and even deciding to go further back now within the train yard. Seems like Mad Lions are going to execute off of this one. And we have Mouse Sports rotating players through Z already smoked off. And with just the pistols, it's hard to find that line of sight. And even harder so when Astillion is just pumping SMG shots into your head. That's two dead and three to go for most sports, but it looks like they're on the retreat already. Shout out to Asilian too. I feel like he's made such development as a as a player, and I was surprised to see him get picked up by the team on their way up, in a sense, where I felt like Asilian was not really uh, quite the lateral move to fill in the shoes of Hundin, but then to also, you know, bring in extra firepower versus great teams. But he was fragging last map. He's definitely looked solid, and, yeah, and the team does look as cohesive as ever, so... Uh, yeah, just want to just give him a quick shout out on top of everything else. All the all the pieces definitely look very strong, and he seems like a you know wonderful complimentary move for Mad Lions. Twelve rounds here, seven rounds of difference, four to go. We're in tripping distance of the finishing line. Yeah, Mad Lions at this point. I think that uh, this is the this is that world where they could start to afford to make some mistakes, but in making those mistakes, they could also pull off audacious plays. So keep your eyes on it. Don't look away from the screen for a moment. Don't even blink. Hmm. Don't want to miss a frame. Chris J. More like Push J. He's up here. Scouring out the box halls. Eagle J. The Silver Smoke Sniper. J. Whatever you Ooh. want him to be, Jay. Down the ladder. I like that he doesn't stick around there. You know, he was doing a good job. He's another one of those moments where he gets that armor 
on Inferno, I still could not figure that out. Remember when yeah. it came back to cost him? I mean, he it was weird because he saved the previous round mm -hmm. where everybody else didn't so that he'd have enough money for the op. So this that was the weird part. Not one of those situations, but the moment I saw that Kevlar, I had to calculate the money. If he did it twice in one series, I'd have to poke fun. Oh. But uh, listen, speaking of fun, it's going to be a rip through this A bomb site, you'd think. There is still that scout back, but it's, oh my God, of all things, killed by the MP5 SD. Let that sink in. SMG versus Scout. And he gets the win at one of the longest angles on this map. Wild mm. scenes. But uh, I think fair scenes and what we've come to expect. Remember, Acor, I mean, he's just playing this round with a Deagle. Doesn't even buy a gun. Disrespect all over the place. And Asylian just slipping in to this back line versus the CTs. Frozen's going to try to punish him, but he too toppled. 13-5 for Mad Lions. You find me one reason to believe that most sports are going to make this comeback happen. 13-5, and not a single death on this round. No reason to even upgrade. They're just going to probably... I don't even know if they will, honestly. They probably just try something fast and uh, apply pressure where if most sports want to buy an op, they're going to be missing grenades. If they want to pull up rifle buy, there might be a couple of people missing grenades. Just got a glimpse of the economy. Uh, and yeah, it's worth it. You can still win with the SMGs and, and in fact because you've got that rest, reckless abandon factor on the SMGs They uh, they can just like jump through smokes and move quickly Take something Still still be still decent grenades still decent grenades here for the CTs though They're looking all right. I, I like mad lions ladder drop where they have one on the ladder one standing on one's head but not on the ladder and then they the one on the ladder presses jump, moves to the left side as they drop, and they both drop in different spots. I think that's kind of the most optimal way to drop ladder right now on top of the different Molotov combos that you can throw just so that you can avoid getting traded because aiming at the, the head of the person at the bottom of the totem pole some, can sometimes mean both players will die the exact same fashion, but if they're beside each other, they can't be traded in the same fashion. So I like that Mad Lions are employing that strategy and giving mouse ports a hard time in the ladder, just like mouse ports gave them in the ladder in the first half. Flashbangs and smokes signaling the inevitable push. Kerrigan blind, but still good for a kill and the follow-up headshot. It's gonna cost bodies for Mad Lions to get some pressure on this A site, but they actually don't even follow through. Nope. They've got something better. Bubski over towards this B site, finding Rops on his retreat towards Z. He just wanted to keep an eye on the ramp, but they had already slipped a player past, and Chris almost catches him. So now this is the playmaker position. He jumps up and drops bomb. That is a huge kill, but he can't manage the follow-up frag, so Woxic's gonna have to do it all on his own. God, that's so rough. Chris got the info and didn't want to shoot the first guy, but then he gets spotted. He hits the incredible shot, but wishes he could have lurked on Bubski before doing anything else. The peak up into upper, walks it, good for the one, but there's no way he suspects a second player tuck. Bubski does him dirty, and Mad Lions, they've gotten that 14th round. A nine round advantage, economic momentum, and an opponent who can barely afford to buy. You've got to love how Bubski was the man to lurk into the B site to open things up and then ends up getting a lurk frag in a 1v1 situation. Walksick jumps into his arms, but he doesn't Sometimes catch him. Sometimes with Bubski, it's almost like it might, he's, he's, he exists within duality because sometimes he looks like a hard entry. Other times he looks like a total lurk. You know, yeah, he, he, he is able to shift into this aggressive mode like, like not many others. And I really yeah. like that. It's refreshing. You know, we saw the death of the lurker role. You know, the days of happy are long gone, but but he is the new generation of lurker in a way. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a, he's a neutrino passing through everything, slowing down for no one, slowing down for no one. Oh yeah, I like that. Nothing can slow him down. The massless entity. Frozen. Oh, yes. Deagle connects. He's going to go ahead and reload it as Rops connects the headshot as well with his scout, but he is burned off of Z. So they're going to double back and everybody for Mouse Sports trying to get into the old bomb all while Woxic hard flanks 
It's just the P250 for this flank, but he upgrades into the AWP, catching Bubsky by surprise. Mm, can't get that second one as he drops the two points of health. So Roy and Shush, separate from one another, but with huge HP advantage over top of what's <laughs> left of Mouse Sports, and that frag grenade's gonna help because as I said, Mouse Sports have everybody else coming in from the opposite side. So now eyes forward for Mad Lions or eyes sideways. Seems like Roy can't quite manage the player on the bomb site and Shush is down after his second frag. That's a six for Mouse Sports. There is still a chance. Nice play there by Chris, walking out into the bomb train, just in his mind, visualizing where he thinks he knows someone will be, and then locking him down, turning that into a 2K. That's great. An amazing nade there from Roy to kill Woxic inside of Tecon, just trying to play his position, hold down a piece of map control-wise while his teammates Ooh. walk in for the rotate. And yeah, this is in the in the post plant. You know, that, that perfectly plays grenade. But even the he's Eagle and Scout gone. shot in the end, man. If you think about it, they, they come back to matter so much. Cutting off the numbers there for Mad Lions. Mm. They barely got it over the line. But uh, whoa, whoa. Hyper aggression coming out of Mad Lions. Already exiting Tcon and already starting to fall. That's two members down as Rops very quickly wastes no time to run back down the ladder room, executing two, hits them from the sidelines, and Roy's got everything to do. AK up. Threat nearby, Woxic holds the line. A seven for Mouse Sports. You know, I still really like the AUG outside on train. AUG is uh, definitely not not bad at all. And long lines of sight, it's a map already very friendly to, to Ops, and that'll just tell you the AUGs can benefit as well. And um, I think Kerrigan, it makes his spots a bit more consistent to have that. You know, if you're super sick, you can still take those long range duels with an M4 and, you know, very competently be able to hold round after round. But um, I, I, I don't mind the odd whatsoever. I think it's easy to uh, forget that it wasn't nerfed nearly as hard as the Krieg. It just happened to uh, unfold on the very same day. Rox, hello. And Mad Lions, goodbye. Four piece, four rops here in the anti-eco. He is now at 21 frags, 13 deaths. Refuse to go down without a fight. Yeah, rops, great on this last map, great in their last series. Uh, only one with a very decent rating. Basically, the one of the only good things about Mad Sports these days, sadly. The one these days, show. I mean that very ephemerally. Like just in the past, re in the past recent matches, like this Masters run, um, they've just been not not very good. But two hundred dollar decoy. Every member of Mouse Sports has more enemies flashed than four members of Mad Lions. Oh, huh? You're too shabby. That's a. Uh... That's pretty good. That's a damning stat for the, the, the team um, specifically. I was actually players, wondering about that. Two players for Mad Lions with notable flashbangs at the moment. Asilian has 27, Acor 14, and then the other three goes seven, four, and two. Mm. Always good to see the IGL have the most flashbangs. Always good to see. All in a great example of that. Oh. A great example of that. A quick off shot up into the box halls. And remember that this is the buy round Mad Lions were working towards. So for them to be knocked down a peg so quickly, you know it's gonna sting. But be careful, Rops. Ooh, or throw caution to the wind. The man rounds the corner. He knows exactly what's going on. Calls out Roy Boost. And uh, we very swiftly find ourselves in a 5v2 Two turned one even. Woxic. All right, my man. Locking down that B bomb site. I'm very curious to see if this double op really starts rolling for most sports. I think it could be the key to the success that they need if they're going to make this unthinkable comeback happen. If I'm mad lines, I'm thinking about how do I get to the B site? Um, how do I how do I crack open the B site without them knowing? And how do I get the bomb down in even numbers? That would be my primary goal right now because... I think that, you know, that flashbang stat, when they were taking outside, I was wondering, like, how flash was Kerrigan? How many nades were coming out? Whoa. How many nades were coming out when they were going outside? And how much progress could have been made if they had better flashbangs? Because they seemed to all die in the first 10% of the site, like, up by E-Box and before that. And uh, I think 
like if they if they don't figure that out, it's obviously going to continue to be a problem. Oh, that Kerrigan's like, I don't really care if you come back to try to peek Ivy. In fact, I don't think you will. No, executes him. Glossic. Dude, I love that he peeks in and his crosshair is between two people, right? Which can sometimes, I know firsthand, fluster someone right, with the sniper. Yeah, right in the middle of a... Yeah, you know, yeah. you just left click, like 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 bullet magnetism might ah! help you out. But uh, <laughs> in this case, Woxic, quick, slick fingers, slides it to the side and gets his opening kill. Now, Robs is going to flash him for the upper peak, and he does get bullied back here, peppered by the pistol arrows of Mad Lions, who are also equipped with quite the belts of utility here. Smoke Grenade bounces up the ramp. Still pretty easy to actually move past this if they use utility of their own. It's not the type of smoke that screws you up at the base of the ramp, so they're gonna try and force the issue, but Rops, nice angle from on top of the train yard. He has to fall back through the molly, so he dies. Gunned down by Roy, who wastes no time moving forward. That bomb's actually on the front side of the site. A little unorthodox in this post plant, decides to move back before going down. No, he just straight up side plants. That's going to be exposed now to both directions. Oh. And with Bugsky inside of Z, he needs a gun. But Kerrigan manages the AUG versus the reload. As Woxic picks up another one with the sniper, Asilian finds his paws on an M4. That's one rifle for Mad Lions to try and play off of, one player for them to try to play off of. And it's way too much to manage. A tenth for Mouse Sports, now within four. Yeah, really good patience on everything there. Chris holding that smoke for as long as he did. Everybody trusting their positions in the retake. You gotta love that from Mouse Sports for sure. And, uh, you know, Bubs, wow, that was a nice shot too. Bubsky was out there trying to make a play. Kerrigan, I think, uh, for when the ladder flank. He was up there, came super late to the back of Z. Bubsky was like, what the hell are you doing here this late? <laughs> Meanwhile, you're, you know, he's outside, of course. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was a nice hold. It was a good good execute honestly mad lions uh, really stuck to the spacing sacrificed their first player to get out but push rob's back allowed the bomb to go down that's the big and... one that's the huge kill oh like, wait oh, a second needed they had tagged him up the bottom of ladder and that frag grenade just bounced down right on the mark this was a very hectic start to the round wouldn't be surprised uh if you guys missed some things, but uh, that was a big T-Con fight and then also inside of Pop Dog all at the same time. I think I think both Mad Lions know they won't be in this situation. I think Mel Sports know they won't be as well. I, I feel like Ross is preparing to flank since they're down one guy and they already have they're the early something. rotate out. Ooh, Chris oh. can't manage. Gets just the one kill. Really good timing there on Mad Lions peak. Doing a double dip in both directions. Then catching flank is Bubsky. This is the round. This is the round that secures Mad Lions over time at the least. It started off with Kerrigan getting close to T-Con. He gets one kill with the AUG. Barrel stuffs the hard entry attempt for Mad Lions. Dies to Acor, who was tucked in behind boxes. And then as we saw, Frozen didn't even get a chance to stay standing as he was just blown to smithereens. Woxic finds no opening back into this. He has to save what has been a crucial piece for Mouse Sports' attempt at a comeback. That AWP has played a role most certainly. Five Man. map and match points, Mohan, and elimination on the line. Chris J hits a nice shot, but I feel like because he dies, that's the reason Robs dies, because the player upper who's left over goes back to watch the flank. And I feel like they're, it, it really did feel like Mel Sports knew that, that Mad Lions wanted to go B, but he was playing up on top of the train where he could have held down one choke point and then played more to stay alive and maybe get one. And uh, Robs could have been more instrumental in that round, but was kind of risk, risky about it. But at the same time, credit to Mad Lions for not throwing a single grenade and just attacking from both choke points off contact. But yeah, this could be the very last round of the series. Elimination here. For mouse sports wild scenes who would have thought complexity big mad lions and mouse sports and these are the two teams with the zero two record just looking for that one series win to keep them alive here at dreamhack masters spring 2020 flash goes past walks it gives up the angle chooses not to re-peek into this it's a dangerous game with acor on the other side
aggro T-Con control here for the CTs. It's a smart move. If Mad Lions, we can see they're pressed against both Ivy and Ladder with three, their core all on T-Con. They can't take outside without T-Con control or respecting the fact that there's a smoke here. A little bit of utility usage coming out of Roy. Trying to beat his chest and seem more intimidating than he is. He's got the attention of a couple of Mouse Sports players, but he is just one. And he has actually gotten past the smoke. Oh, but he's got to clear the corner on Ivy. He could find huge timing. Roy decides to just kill Kerrigan. Starts killing teammates in the middle of it all. But that's all right. Shush, still standing. The thing is, is they haven't gotten frozen out from behind the Ivy train. And they've already decided to put that bomb down. A hectic four versus five retake attempt to unfold. And because of the smoke, Wokstick has to shoot blindly through it to get anything going here for Mouse. Chris, up close, needs to check left, but Roy slips by. And Roy could now deny everything because he finds two players with their backs turned. He doesn't actually know Chris's move forward, but no problem. 